the AFC wild card game. The Houston Oilers and the Oakland Raiders. Injuries to Leon Gray and Ken Burrow would not prevent the Oilers from realizing their Super Bowl dream. Houston followed its successful pattern. The fluid power of Earl Campbell and the swift efficiency of its defense. For nearly three quarters, the Oilers shut down Oakland's big play offense. One obstacle was left to conquer, the Raiders' defense. For Houston, it proved to be insurmountable. Lester Hayes' interception was the final blow. The Oilers had fallen for the third consecutive season, each time to the eventual Super Bowl champ. This was no consolation for a team whose dream had been denied once more. about one of pro football's finest teams. The Oilers are the only team in the AFC to make the playoffs in each of the last three seasons. This is a team with the greatest running back in the game today. team with a veteran quarterback, wise in the ways of winning, and a defense as strong as any in the league. The dream may have been delayed in 1980 but the foundation remains. The challenge in 1981 will be to reach football summit. New coach Ed Biles welcomes the task. One thing is certain, the Houston Oilers will continue to keep company with the NFL's elite. For three years, the Oilers have moved comfortably through the NFL's corridors of power. Houston knows what it's like in the league's upper echelons. The strength of our football team is our experience. I feel we've got ex uh, a lot of experienced players who have been involved in playoffs. They know what it takes to prepare themselves. They know what it takes to win. Uh, they know how to win. We've got a lot of people returning on this football team who have been there both sides of the ball, offensively and defense. I think that's the strength of this football team. It may be a cliche, but it's somehow tougher to win unless you have been there and lost. Experience generates character, and character produces champions. The Oilers have those qualities. They have athletes who know what it takes to win. Tim Wilson, Ronnie Coleman, Rich Castor, Rob Cofford, Angelo Fields, Booby Clark, Carl Roaches. All role players. Players willing to sublimate their individual skills to make the team better. 
You don't win without them, and the Oilers have them. Nowhere is this more evident than on defense. In an era of increasing specialization, it takes more than 11 starters to stop opposing offenses. It takes individuals with specific and defined roles. Pass rushers, nickel backs, quick line backs. Houston has all of them. In the secondary, it's Carter Hartwig. At linebacker, there's Ted Thompson and Darrell Hunt. On the defensive line, number 67, Mike Stensrud and Jesse Baker add their special talent. Baker, number 75, is Houston's designated pass rusher. The man he replaces is Elvin Bethay. But Bethay, number 65, a 13-year pro, can still defense the run with the best. Situation performance are critical to Houston's defensive success. But it doesn't hurt to have an all-pro like number 52, Robert Brazil. Brazil's calling card is his quickness. More often than not, he is as swift as any player on the field. Another Pro Bowl performer in 1980 was cornerback Greg Stembrick, number 27. Stembrick is the new breed of defensive back a smooth athlete capable of shutting down the game's fleet receivers one-on-one. -on -one. While Stemrick made the Pro Bowl, any member of Houston secondary is good enough to make that same claim. Vernon Perry, Mike Reinfeldt, and number 33, J.C. Wilson, complete a unit as strong as any in football. Role players and all pros are the cutting edge of the Oilers' defense, but the heart and soul is a group of solid veterans. Durable and dependable pros like Greg Bingham, number 54, Ted Washington, Art Stringer, Andy Doris, and Ken Kennard. On a Thursday night in Houston, in front of a national television audience, the Oilers' defense composed a masterpiece. The performance came at the expense of the defending Super Bowl champion, Pittsburgh Steelers. Like a knockout punch, Houston's defensive strength was beautiful to watch. Pittsburgh's explosive offense was so abruptly and so totally brought to its knees that the Steelers themselves were stunned by the floor. It was a game that also featured the punting of Cliff Parsley.
with Parsley dropping punts inside the five and the defense squashing the Steelers, Houston's offense had a tough act to follow. The Oilers produced just enough offense to set up two Tony Frisch field goals as Houston wrecked the Steelers six to nothing. Some have suggested that the passing revolution has escaped the Oilers' attention. Earl Campbell is Houston's offense, claim the critics. And, they continue, pro football in the 1980s will be shaped by sleek, wide receivers, not pulverizing backs and powerful tight ends. In 1980, this argument had some merit. Houston's passing game, though efficient, was merely an extension of the running game. It did, however, make use of two of the NFL's top tight ends, Mike Barber and Dave Casper, number 87. Casper is the best in the game at his position, an Adonis who defines what tight end play is all about. In 1980, Barber number 86 enjoyed his finest season. His many talents were complemented by a fierce determination. But things will be different in 1981. Primarily, we won't be the two tight end offense as a basic attack. Uh, we'll be going with a two back, uh, two running back attack, one tight end. Basically, what we, uh, we're attempting to do is let Earl get the same amount of yardage on fewer carries, but force the defense to concentrate not strictly on Earl, but worry about some of the other people that we have who are good football players. In 1981, the focus of the Oilers' attack will be redirected. The offense will no longer be conservative, deliberate, and ultimately predictable. It will be aggressive and adventurous all because of the passing game. Our thoughts on the passing game uh, this year will be we'll probably put the ball up in the air more on first down. I think when we get into the scoring area, we had difficulties last year when we hit the 20, 25 yard area of getting the ball in the end zone. I think you'll find us uh, putting the ball in the air a little bit more there. I think we'll be more wide open in that area. Again, trying to put some pressure on the defenses that they have to open up and spread out. Uh, with the idea of spreading people out, it's going to force uh, some single coverage on some of our receivers. A basic difference in passing game will be, again, utilization of wide receivers rather than just the tight ends in the passing attack. The sleek athletes on the borders of the field will have their say in Houston in 1981. Mike Renfro, a healthy Ken Burrow, and Rich Castor will become main men as the Oilers soar into the new season with an impelling new offensive approach. One question remains. Who will be the quarterback? The veteran Ken Stabler, the starter last season, or the younger Gifford Nielsen? The thing that we have to con be concerned about is when is the proper time to make that type of change? Or when is the young quarterback ready to replace the veteran quarterback? Stabler has done an outstanding job as a quarterback in this league. He had uh, an off year last year from the standpoint of throwing uh, a number of interceptions. That may have been for many number of reasons, not all his fault. It's going to be interesting from our standpoint to see if the changing of the offense back to 
of more of the things that he has done in the past when he was with another football team, whether this uh, he feels more comfortable with this. Stabler is a competitor, and we feel that uh, he's going to uh, he's extremely disappointed in the year last year. We, we feel that uh, he wants to prove to a lot of people that he is still a, a great quarterback that we feel that he is. For seven years, Stabler quarterbacked a wide open dynamic offense that was unafraid to throw at any time. On a Monday night in Houston against the Patriots, Stabler rekindled the fires of the past. In Houston's new look offense, this flame should burn brightly in 1981. This was the kind of game Stabler loves to play. Both teams threw often and well. But as he has done so often in his career, Stabler confidently took control with his poise, precision, and a little bit of luck. With a game plan matched to his talent and personality, Stabler can still be a dominant quarterback, capable of winning through the air. With a passing game more prominent in 81, the snake may be on the loose again. Houston's offensive look may change, but there will still be room for number 34. simply the best there is in the game today. But more than that, Campbell may well be the greatest running back the sport has ever produced. I saw Brown tailing his career, and, and I, you know, I think this has got guys as good as Jimmy Brown. Uh, he's a strong man, very strong. I think that's a, the key to his whole game is his strength. He don't look that big, but I tell you one thing, when they try to tackle him, they find out. Campbell is truly a man among boys. In pro football's passing revolution, Campbell is the aberration, the one man larger than the revolution. The Campbell soup line helps make it all possible. Mock Young, Towns, Heyman, Fisher, and all-pro Leon Gray. They share a special place in the heart of the man they block for. If you only knew how much I depend on those guys, and they would probably sit here on camera and tell you how much they depend on me. I think if it's anything I ever ask one of them, plan or not, I believe they do it, because they know I do the same thing with them. Being able to have a relationship like that with people you play pro football with is it's great, and I think that's one of the greatest things about sports. I think success is great to me because I enjoy sharing it with other people, and as long as I share it with other people, I think I will always be successful. The Oilers, like their great running back, will continue to be successful. They are a team with talent, experience, and a determination to shape their destiny. I think we'll probably be uh, an aggressive football team. I think rather than uh, avoiding uh, losing philosophy, we're going to be a football team that's going to go out and attempt to win the football game rather than sit back and try and avoid losing the football game. On the regular season's final Sunday in 1980, the Oilers played the kind of aggressive football that will define their style in 1981. Earl 
Caleb Campbell rushed for over 200 yards for the fourth time in 1980. But he was only a part of the plan, not the entire show. An oiler defense as strong from top to bottom as any in the league shut down the NFC's best passing game, intercepting four passes. But more importantly, Houston threw the ball and threw it well. On this day against Minnesota, the offense was not one-dimensional. It was very sharp and finally more effective. The Oilers played the total game. It was a preview of things to come in 1981. We feel we've got a good football team. Uh, talking and, and all these type things are extremely easy to do. The only way we can handle those things is what happens when, they, when we kick off in September. I feel extremely confident that this football team uh, feels that they have a lot of things still to prove. The proving ground will be the battlefield. But you can count on one thing. When December comes, the Houston Oilers will be among the best in the NFL. Biles inherits a legacy of success, but it's the promise of tomorrow that fuels Houston's championship dreams.